al almost it is a byte, computer byte, by the nature, by certain genes. When it is the mandible, the jaw, jaw is getting clipped into ossicle. Excepting stapes. Stapes is in the second heart. Yes. Sir. Yes, good. But if I am so much to lay out, I think Gupta Ji, Buckingham Palace Corporation Carta. Come on, let ये तो हमारे प्रिंस चार्ल्स बन गया Full, full, full. Forty thousand, yes. Forty thousand. No, 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 I want forty. I'll check. Uh, can you switch off the mic? Mic is on, huh?
you can yeah yes you can hang it there mic is on or off okay uh huh it will start in some time Suction, suction, suction. 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 Left hand. to fit i have a pipe also i have a tube also okay. uh -huh. this works Here it is focused.
not working. I have not started, I am just cleaning the bone. Yes, sir. Are you starting? No, 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 sir. I'm just preparing the bone. Whenever you're ready, you can tell me, sir. I'll start. Sure, sure, sir. I'm just cleaning up the bone. Sure. Those two lectures after the lectures we will start. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll keep it ready by then. Sure, 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 sir. You're from? You're from which department? Which department? OT 
Okay, you are sure. OT is OT is okay. Your name? Deepak Kumar. Do a tympanotomy. You can do a tympanotomy. Yes. You can do a mutant skin incision, and you can do tympanotomy. Open the uh, middle ear and see the uh, incurs stapes, interior stapes joint, and you can even do a stapedectomy. You can practice to do stapedectomy. Before that, what we are going to do is that see the round window reflex. That will tell you that this is uh, the stapes is fixed or not. So in Kerala also, you have to you can see and practice the round window reflex. What is this round window reflex? When you are pressing over the inferior superior joint and just put a drop of saline over the round window, then that round window becomes and it will be appreciated. So in that round window reflex is present. That means the stapes are not fixed. And if it is absent, that means the stapes is fixed. So once you know that stapes is fixed, then you can use a stapes between. And after the, this internal uh, green and this stapes plus minus, the next thing is that uh, just to uh, the part of the season from 6 o'clock, you can do it somewhere after the thermograph. After the thermograph, then you can do it in a bucket and this lab. There's a bucket and this lab which is used for exposing the surface of the kingdom of the entire world so that you can put glass in on the position. If you want to put the glass in over the or on the position, then you have to practice that or put it in this lab. So you can do it in the superior of the when the epithelium, squamous epithelium is not very really angry, and the fibrous angles is bad, you can put the glass there between the fibrous angles and the squamous epithelium and just deposit it back. The market value is bad. So then you can put this, then you can hyperbid for the name. I don't think that 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 Next to me. Then you, you can see the, that is the area in hypotympanum. You find the tympanic plexus. You find the tympanic plexus. So identify the tympanic plexus and just cauterize it. Or you can just, with the help of any second knife or anything, you can ablate it. So that is tympanic neurectomy. That is tympanic neurectomy, which is done in cases of face syndrome. Gastrectomy, that is known as gastrectomy sweating. That is a complication of a superficial parodiotomy where when a person eats, when there is salivation from the skin area. And if you want to do that, you can do the skin body movement. Then you can do canal plastic. If you want to widen the saw the canal, then because it is a traffic alley where it is going to you on the internal skin, then you can widen the canal. You can widen the canal. It is always better to have a wind source in the epithelium and the epithelium so that you can reach the epithelium and the epithelium and the cellulose. It is an improvement in the future. It is an improvement for the progress of the epithelium and the epithelium and the epithelium. And then you can do the repair doing this canal plastic. So that is how to do canal plastic. Then learn what are the different approaches to the middle ear and muscular, soft tissue approaches. When you can do the same, the next is end on the approach. So you can see the end on the area and practice that. You can do the end on the approach. 
when you can do post hour interviews, and after that post hour interviews, you can have various combinations and extensions of this post hour interviews, which you use for say the skull based surgery that you can practice. Then, learn to harvest various types of grafts which are used. Why don't you come off uh, this side? They are used for uh, myoplasty, uh, to panoplasty, like to increase your so very pericondium, and to increase your very Which are probably used, and if you join, then uh, your 90% job is okay. over. So, uh, Do you have to start to say slabs which are used for lining of the muscle? I'll take later. This will be the first time of this is what is our individual muscle of the muscle. Code pick. Code pick. This is code pick. Code pick. Both are code pick. 45 degree, 45 degree. 45, all three are 45. Different sizes. Ball probe, sir? Ball probe, yes. Most of the superficial temporal arch, one of the posterior branches of the superficial temporal arch. Double end knives, one side code. Okay. That is the inferior to this. The body is socially combined with post-ancular muscular periosteal slab. So you can elevate it along with the temporal socia. You can elevate the muscular periosteal slab in it. Inferiorly, this is also an axial flag. This is based on the one of the divisions of the post angular artery. So, we have one of the limitations also on this. And this was a very interesting one from Singapore. And it is going to be consistent on the other processes. We have nothing like that. We have more than 70 cases in this side of the police group. So, we have some discussions. Should I start, sir, or should I wait for? Uh... Yes, yes, two minutes. Okay. Then all these things you can do. Then if you can do the particle master technique. Once you do particle master technique, you can do the after particle master technique. In the same area, you can in the lithotic side surgery. You can do. Then you can do associated plotting or facial lasers approach. Then once you extend the facial lasers and see your view. Then again, in three of the angle, the conversation angle is there that you will be able to further extend it downwards. Then you can do the lateral temporary bone resection, but you will be in two and faces as I answer as the start of the canal. That you can do it. Then to the partial to the other, you can do it with this insertion as a complete implant. When you go and dominate the implant also, you can put inside as the way the partial implant is. You can do the... You can just build the entire area of the mix. Then extended facial lasers approach you can do. This is for cytopentanic and large venous tumors. I think they are passing over the extraordinary development. Then after that, those are the very side of the muscle and the very muscle and the very side of the muscle and the very side of the muscle. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Your audio is not very clear here, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello? Thank you. 
Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hear me now, sir. Hello. 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 Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we are skipping our next lecture. The next lecture was a uh, city computer game. Uh, but uh, we will take this lecture after lunch. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll start, sir. Uh, so first session of this our academic section. We are starting this, and uh, for this session, we the moderator is sir, is professor and head AMU, uh, Institute of Medical Sciences AMU. And Dr. Ashpur Rajan, he was previously associate professor in the MLM Medical College at Aragaz. So please come, sir, and moderate this session. Uh, this session is as uh, already given, it's a basic biology. And uh, after lunch, we will start this advanced biology. So we have both basic and advanced biology day one, and day two is the hands on. Yeah, Dr. Vijayan. ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ and he will start with music and he will start with music. So, we have two slides. We have to ask you 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 to ask his uh, i have done workshop workshop of his father dr vidyan and also with uh, such a skin name dr mahadevanya who was uh, a been uh, a guru and mentor of dr jain himself so i have seen uh, work of dr mahadevanya and dr vidyan from very close quarters and uh, so today's a good moment that i am uh, going to see dr vidyan as well welcome sir yes sir audio is not very clear here sir uh, can i start uh, should i wait no wait for me wait for a minute actually there is no display here i am not able to clearly hear what is uh, going on in the auditorium sir okay okay um, wait for me just
can start or wait, okay. This is not displaying there, no? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, <coughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Yes. हाँ सर हाँ थैंक्स स्टेपीस आई थिंक आई डू इट लेटर बिकॉज़ देस नो टाइम नाउ आई फिनिश ऑफ मास्टोइड इफ देर इस टाइम इन द एंड आई डू द स्टेपीस यस या या यस 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 I can start or working <coughs> Hello Can you hear me uh, Can you hear me Hello Yes we can hear you sir please come. What we need is because in India, in the assembly of the Sahaja Prabhu, there has to be no inquiry, and that is why the Tamil Nadu government will be built. And if those come up in
after grommet and a clean hello Hello. 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 I can start. Okay, sir. Good morning, everyone. At the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity, especially Mangal sir and uh, Prabhat Srivatsa sir, who has been in contact, uh, touch with me constantly from the last few months to organize this. and the entire department of uh, ent and the anatomy department for all these wonderful arrangements so we are already running a little behind schedule so let me start off uh, with a myringotomy and a grommet insertion so for myringotomy we can take an incision in the uh, anterior superior quadrant or anterior inferior quadrant uh, you can use a sickle knife for it it is very simple just make a stab incision here there is also a myringotomy scissors which you get or a myringotomy knife which is also very useful so you can just make an incision like this at our center we usually do this under uh, uh, we just use a surface anesthesia that is uh, 10% xylocaine we just spray the patient and they are quite comfortable if you wait for about 10 minutes and then do the procedure uh, <coughs> usually i use a shepherd's uh, grommet so you can just after making the incision just place the grommet here connected us and using a curved pick you can just push the upper end through the myringotomy which you have done so it easily goes in so this is quite simple and easy to do and of course in a cadaver you can try practicing again and again so that it becomes easy for you when you are doing it on a live patient so just place the lower end near the incision that you have made and use a curved pick like this and just gently apply pressure and that itself will push the grommet inside so it's a very easy procedure and uh, once you practice it on uh, cadaver you get more confidence to do it and this can be done like i said and uh, without any local anesthesia without any infiltration we just use uh, 10% xylocaine spray and the, most of the patients <coughs> uh, withstand the procedure very easily <coughs> so now i'll just uh, take uh, the canal incisions and elevate the flap uh because we are running behind schedule i won't do a stepidotomy now maybe later when we have time i'll uh, come back and do the stepidotomy in the other bone uh for now i'll just show the anatomy of the middle ear and also while doing a stepidotomy we always take an incision at around 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position just to orient everybody this is a right temporal bone so how do i know that it is a right temporal bone imagine the patient is lying down in surgical position this is the mastoid tip here so this will be the foot end of the patient and uh, this is the zygoma so this will be the head end of the patient so if the patient is lying down in surgical position this is a right temporal bone we can so hear you nicely you can see the dotovine uh, can you hear us uh, the audio is not very clear sir hello audio is not very clear okay please carry on matlab uh, hello You you can carry on. We can see and we can hear you nicely. We are yeah. trying to fix the system here. I can hear here. you, but not very clear, sir. It's okay. Okay, don't worry. You just so carry on. So after making we'll the twelve o'clock and six o'clock uh, incision, you take a horizontal incision about six millimeters lateral to the annulus. This is the area of the annulus, using a uh, round knife here, and taking an incision to join the first two vertical incisions that I've made.
go up to the level of the bone and scrape the skin from the bone and that will easily give you access to elevate the flap. Of course, the canal is a bit irregular in this case. <coughs> Ratavina, can you hear us now? This is the annulus. I've reached up to the annulus. I always enter the middle ear inferior to the level of the cauda tympani. There's a bulge here in the posterior canal wall, which is obscuring the view. Now you can see the middle ear. I've elevated the annulus. This is the annulus here, this white color structure band which you're seeing here, that is the annulus. And here you can see the cauda tympani. Let me zoom in a little bit. <coughs> is the picture clear, sir? Hello, yeah, Prachi is very clear and your voice is also clear. Can you hear us now? Hello. Yeah, here you can see the cauda tympani. You can't hear us. Yeah, yeah, okay. This is the cauda tympani here. This is the annulus and medial to that, what I'm touching, that is the cauda tympani. Now you can see the corda very clearly and this is the incus and the stapes and the incudostepidial joint is also very clearly seen. Yeah. Can you hear us now? This is the malleus. You can see the corda tympani going medial to the malleus here. This is the corda tympani, this is the malleus. And what you're seeing here, this is the process cochlearyformis and this is the tensor tympani. Tensor muscle, uh, tensor tendon, sorry. So if you see, when I move the tensor tendon, you can see the malleus also moving. So the anatomy is very clearly seen. The malleus is here. This is the processus cochlearyformis, tensor tendon. This is the cauda tympani. This is the incus. Is it okay? Yeah. Yes. Uh, this white color thing which you're seeing here, this is the stepedial muzzle. This is the stepedial muzzle which I'm touching with the uh, instrument here. This is the stapes. Yes, sir. Hello. No, it's okay. Oh, Dr. Vinay, can you hear us now? Yes, sir, but uh, not very loudly. Okay. Volume, uh, is the voice clear? Yes, 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 sir. Now it's better. Good, good. Uh, I'm Dr. Ashtosh and I'm here with Dr. Aftab here from the auditorium. We will try to communicate with you as you go along with uh, dissection. Um. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear us now? Is the voice clear? Hello? Yes, Dr. Vinay. Is the voice clear? Can you hear from the auditorium? So I can't hear very clearly, sir. So while doing a stapes surgery, we always try to expose the stapes as much as possible. So I'm curating the posterior rim here. 
and the limit of curating is till you see the horizontal facial canal superiorly and till you see the pyramidalis process posteriorly. So using this curate, I'm just removing this bony overhang in the posterior rim. No problem. So always be careful while curating. Your direction of curating should always be away from the oscular chain. Because when you're doing a stapis surgery, if your curate slips and you accidentally hit the oscular chain, then there are chances of subluxation of the uh, incredomalial joint, uh, dislocation of the incredomalial joint. Or if you directly hit the stapis, there may be subluxation of the stapis. You should be very careful. Whenever you're curating, always curate away from any important structure that you're curating. Now I've got a better exposure. You can see the malleus here very clearly. And medial to that, you can also see the horizontal facial canal. This is the horizontal facial canal here. You should be very careful because uh, very commonly you see a descent horizontal facial canal. And you can see the distance between the facial canal and the stapes here. The corda is coming in the way here, but you can see the uh, stapes foot plate. I'll just show you. <coughs> is the focus OK, sir? Now, this is the, this is the incus here. This is the head of the stapes. This is the stapedial tendon. This is the posterior crust. And here you can see the stapes foot plate which I'm touching. Foot plate is very clearly seen. <coughs> Little bit more if I curate, you can see the pyramidalis process also. Sir, stapes instruments. So uh, now that I've already seen the foot plate, it is very tempting to do a uh, stepidotomy. So I'll try to do it now. Stapes instruments. You can see the pyramidalis process very clearly. Uh, and, but the corda is coming in the way. So one way to avoid that is to decompress the corda. So try to uh, curate out the bone near the origin of the corda so that uh, helps to stretch the corda so you can push it away from the field of your surgery. So stapes surgery, you need a good field of vision to do the surgery. So the more you curate near the origin of the corda, the better will be your uh, vision of the foot plate. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm curating the bone near the corda just so that I can push it away from the field of the surgery. Hello. Yes, sir. Can we up here? Dr. Vinay? Yes, yes, sir. Is the voice clear? Yes. Good, good. Uh, we can see you, uh, the uh, dissection very well, and we can hear you as well. So, so can you be uh, a little louder, sir? I'm not able to hear. OK. Uh, can you? So uh, do you prefer curate, or do you prefer a skeeter drill uh, for uh, drilling the posture canal wall? During, during stapes? Uh, sir, I no. wasn't able to hear you. Can you? I'm just asking, do you prefer to curate or do you use a drill? Uh, no, sir, we don't use a drill while doing stapes surgery. We try okay. to keep the middle ear as sterile as possible. So I don't want to use any irrigation also. So okay. for that reason, we use a curate only. OK, fine. So now you can see the pyramidalis process also. I'll just zoom in. Yeah. Yeah, if you can magnify a bit, that will look much better. Thank you. Yeah. 
What magnification are you using, Dr. Vijayan? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. What magnification are you at the moment? Uh, this is uh, this doesn't have uh, steps in magnification, sir. It just uh, you can keep zooming in and zooming out okay, automatically. Fine. Right. What do you advise for the beginners? 10x? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, especially when you're working close to the foot plate, it's better to work at a very high magnification. I use the highest magnification. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you can see clearly this is the stepedial tendon. And yeah. uh, this uh, stape suprastructure is also seen. This is the posterior crust. Right. Yeah, you can see very, very clearly. Yeah. And actually, you can see the anterior crust also. I'll just zoom in. Mm. Here you can see the anterior crust. This is the anterior crust, yeah. this is the posterior crust, this is the stepedial yeah. tendon, and you yeah. can see the foot plate very clearly. Yeah. And this is the horizontal facial canal which I'm palpating here. Yeah. And this is the corda tympani. Mm -hmm. Section blocked. So always try to get this uh, field, clear field before you start making the fenestra. <coughs> like I said, uh, superiorly, I try to visualize the horizontal facial canal, which I've done here. And uh, posteriorly, I can see the pyramidalis process. So now I have enough place here to make the fenestra 0.3. So where do we make the fenestra? So the fenestra should always be made in the posterior one third of the foot plate. That is because <coughs> the uh, saccule and the utricle lie more anteriorly. So if you make the fenestra anteriorly, there are chances that you might puncture the saccule. So this is a 0 0.3 millimeter perforator, which I'm going to place in the posterior one third of the foot plate. This is posterior, this is anterior. So posterior one third of the foot plate. So one has to be very gentle while making this. and. Uh, don't apply any sort of pressure on the foot plate. Gently rotate, uh, the hold the instrument between your thumb and your index finger. Gently place it without any pressure. And slowly start rotating it. What should be the direction of the, of the perforator? Can you just explain to the beginners, please? What should be the direction of the tip of the perforator? That should be perpendicular to the foot plate, sir. So that there is an even fenestra which is made. So mm -hmm. I'm just placing it on the foot plate and gently turning it to and fro. So gentle rotations, don't apply pressure. It's more of a tactile sensation which you'll feel when the foot plate is giving way. Yeah. Of course, in cadaver, it is more difficult to do this because. Uh, in autosclerosis, the foot plate will be more thick. So it is easier for you to make a fenestra in a patient of autosclerosis than in a cadaver. Because most of the cadavers, it will be a normal foot plate. So this is a 0 0.3 millimeter fenestra which I have made. Shall mm. I close it? Yeah. Thank you. 0 0.4. Uh, no, no. Uh, so uh, this is what we call a control fenestra. 0 0.3 millimeters. Why is this called a control fenestra? Because in case we encounter any problem during the surgery, such as a fractured foot plate or a floating foot plate, there is a 0 0.2 millimeter pick which we can pass inside this, in, uh, inside this uh, fenestra and lift it up from medial to lateral. So once we make the control fenestra, we are very safe. So the next step is to uh, remove the suprastructure. So to remove the suprastructure, first we have to drill out the posterior crust. Sir, for posterior crotomy, you still use uh, the drill or uh, the pick? Uh, drill, sir. 
I usually use a 0.5 millimeter, uh, you get a dental drill, and uh, I usually use a contra angle handpiece for that. But here I'll just try to do it with this uh, small bird tip and a straight angle. So you should be very careful because uh, you're working close to the facial nerve. That uh, drill was wobbling a bit, so such drills are not safe for drilling. So I've changed the bird tip here. No, 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 no suction. So I'm drilling at a very low speed here. Now the posterior crust has been drilled out. So after drilling out the posterior crust, the next step would be to uh, disarticulate the incudostepedial joint. So for this, I use a 45 degree pick. So if you just palpate here, you can find the demarcation of the incudostepedial joint. So always work perpendicular to the, uh, sorry, always work parallel to the direction of the stepedial tendon. The anterior crust is usually very thin and it gets fractured automatically when you push the suprastructure towards the promontory. So now the suprastructure came out. It got stuck in the suction, unfortunately. Usually we need to cut the stepedial tendon also before uh, fracturing the anterior crust. But in this case, the anterior crust was very thin and it came out automatically. Can you show the foot plate clearly? Because the yes. corda is coming in. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I'll just try to push it aside a little bit more. The students can see what exactly it looks yeah, like. Iris is a Iris is in. A... I just cut the remnant stepedial tendon here. There is some addition here between the corda tempera and the incus. I'll release that. Maybe then I'll get a little bit more space. Yeah. Is Find a proper better? space and uh, direction is the most important thing. That's what the beginners need to. Yes, yes, sir. Mind because it looks easy, but uh, when you start putting the piston in, you don't get the yeah. proper. And, yes. and proper space. Yes. So that's what uh, I would like you to uh, make clear. Uh, how do you do it and how you can make it easy for the beginners? Yeah. 0 So now I'm using a 0 0.4 millimeter uh, perforator. Again, place it where you've made the control fenestra and gently rotate it. I think there's already a, a fracture which is happening in the foot plate. So I should be very careful. 
the whole foot plate is moving because like I said, this is a normal foot plate. So in an autosclerotic foot plate, there'll be some amount of resistance, but because it is a normal foot plate, it is more difficult to do. Yeah, we, we need to know how a normal stapes is done and uh, complications we can discuss later like perilium gusher and yes, yes. artery, etc. So, so this uh, is a 0 0.4 millimeter uh, perforator now. Now, because there is a fracture, uh, did, uh, I hope you observe the fracture here. There is a fracture line running anteriorly. Yeah, yeah. So I cannot further extend it because anything may happen. The foot plate might completely collapse inside, subluxate, or there may be uh, fractured fragments which are going inside. Point 0.2. Point zero 0.02, yes. So this is where the 0 0.2 millimeter pick comes in handy. So the 0 0.2 millimeter pick, you can pass inside the fenestra and lift up these fragments from medial to lateral. So that is the advantage of this. Usually it has a small projection, which is not there in this, but still you can go inside and further extend the fenestra and lift up the bony fragments from the vestibule from medial to lateral. So this way you can prevent any complications and you can also extend the, uh, now I can, sorry. The, you, can you see the projection, sir? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, yeah. So that projection helps to lift up the pieces. Of course, this is very freely mobile. So the whole uh, posterior part may come out if I try to pull it out more. That's why you need to do this uh, serial uh, enlargement of the yes, fenestra. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that 0 0.3 millimeter control fenestra, which I made in the beginning, is very important because once you make that, this instrument can pass through the 0 0.3 millimeter fenestra which I have made. Now slowly I am chipping away on the pieces of bone and now I think there is enough space for me to insert the piston. Only this piece, the whole piece is moving posteriorly so I don't want to try to remove this. This much of space is more than enough. Only mm -hmm. thing it's a little irregular but uh, that is okay. There is uh, enough free space around the piston. This has already been cut, sir. Uh, length. Okay, thank you. Uh, crocodile forceps. Alligator crocodile. No, I think it's since. Oh yeah. So I usually use a 0 0.4 millimeter thickness, uh, 0 0.4 millimeter diameter uh, Teflon piston. And the length usually is 4.25 millimeters is what we require. So this is a measuring uh, gig where you can place the piston through the measurement here. Dr. Vinay, can you show how have you measured the, uh, from where to where do you measure before putting, uh, selecting yeah, the piston? That is between the uh, foot plate and the uh, lower end of the incus. Mm -hmm. So I'll just uh, show that. Yeah, can you show that because that is a very important yes, step. Yes, yes. <coughs> the picture is not in the center field. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah that, that's better this now. Is the measuring rod here. Yeah. So I think this is 4, 4.25 and 4.5. Mm -hmm. So if I place it here, you can see the second one is in touching, the place, the, touching the incus. So that will be 4.25. Okay. Yeah, good. So you'll take a piston of 4.25 or 4.5? 4.5 because 0 0.25 yeah. millimeter of the piston should be inside the fenestra for uh, good sound conduction. That's very uh, yeah. That's for the beginners. Yes. So when you have four point two five, you take a piston of point two five plus the length Not of the piston. Inside. What you have measured, so that point two five goes Not inside the 
फुट प्लेट एनी क्वेश्चन विच ऑडियंस वॉन्ट्स टू आस्क ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसीजर प्लीज लेट अस नो और यू कैन आस्क डायरेक्टली सो दैट यू डोंट मिस एनी पॉइंट वी आर विल ट्राई टू complete as many points as many salient features of stepidotomy or any procedure but sometimes even we may miss these so, slots look a little uh, narrow <laughs> this is not uh, going in so i think i'll just have to approximately cut it yeah yeah stepidotomy uh, stepidectomy is a very rewarding procedure if done in the right patient in the right way and uh, when we were residents uh, our teacher professor mangal singh used to say it's a, it's a miracle and uh, we used to do in another local local anesthesia and uh, a deaf almost deaf patient used to start uh, hearing sounds just on the table yes. and uh, we also learned the same way as he sir used to check uh, the hearing by decreasing uh, asking the patient to repeat words and going from higher to lower amplitude so it's a very very rewarding surgery and it's a it's a not a very uncommon disease and now as i uh, i should stress we have got plenty of patients of otosclerosis if we diagnose correctly and use the right methods it's a very rewarding, almost more than 80 to 85% success rate is guaranteed yeah. you can even have more if you uh, do it nicely yes sir i completely agree even i do it under local anesthesia and a lot of advantages of local anesthesia and uh, patient is very comfortable you can check the hearing on the table and in case the piston length becomes a little more patient will have giddiness immediately and you'll know that uh, you have to shorten the length of the piston also so now i've just taken the piston and open the loop of the uh, piston widely